You know, Clemson plays Georgia to kick off the season this Saturday in, um, in basically the grave of the Georgia Dome, right on top of the grave of the Georgia Dome. You may know it as Mercedes-Benz Stadium, but some of us miss the Georgia Dome. It's a noon kickoff. Ooh, Georgia's about a two-touchdown favorite here, 13-and-a-half-point favorite. Do you realize we have the number one and number two active head coaches going at it in terms of win percentage? Do you realize we have three active head coaches who have won national championships, and these are two of them, and the other one's Mac Brown. Do you realize that according to the 24-7 Sports Team Talent Composite, this is the number two and number five roster in America? And do you realize after all that, the folks at FanDuel said, yeah, about a two-touchdown gap between these teams. Um, what happened to Clemson football to warrant such a point spread? Well, it didn't happen overnight, did it? Georgia is, um, this is a paper popper of a stack. If Georgia wins Saturday, that is their 40th straight regular season win. That would be the most since the Oklahoma teams of the mid-50s. And we all remember how great those teams were. Some of you actually do. Cade Klubnick, quarterback at Clemson, just in general, shaky last year. But away from home, really shaky. At home, not terrible. Six and one, 37 points per game last year. Um, points per game is not necessarily a quarterback stat. I understand that. But broad strokes purposes, they scored 37 per game at home. And he was 14 to three touchdown to interception rate. On the road, or neutral site, three and three, win and loss, 21.5 points per game, five to six touchdown to INT. Suffice it to say, a different player. And remember, it was the Duke game that kicked all this off last year. And they turned the ball over every which way imaginable, and Mike Elko and Duke beat them. And there are few truths in an uncertain world, but one of them is the level of competition is going to step up a little bit from Duke here. All due respect to Duke. But it's year two under Garrett Riley. You know, it's year two with Kay Klubnick being the starter here. We got Bryant Wesco. We got TJ Moore at receiver. And I'm not saying that mockingly. I expect a lot from those guys. It's just that I'm counting on true freshman receivers against Georgia's secondary. So not the most favorable matchup in the world there. But if Georgia can't get home, if that pass rush can't get home, maybe, maybe, just maybe, there's an early spark there combined with the whole year two synergy of quarterback and OC. Maybe. It's not a poverty roster. You know, a lot of people are painting this as a blowout waiting to happen. Maybe it is. But this is it's still Clemson football, guys. I just want to remind you, it's still, still a pretty prideful program up there that recruits pretty well. Dabo Swinney, man. You know, it used to be, not too long ago, actually, that they used to find themselves in this spot. They relished this spot. It was called Little Old Clemson. I always thought it was kind of dumb because I, I, I knew even at the time, Clemson doesn't need to be an underdog to much of anyone. Dabo 12-1 and one against the spread as a dog of five-plus points, by the way. So he used to find himself in this spot a lot. They always covered. Sometimes they won. So uh, as for matchups, though, for, forget about the past. As for the here and now, the Georgia offensive line and quarterback situation against Clemson's pass defense is a pretty significant edge to Georgia. A lot of edges to Georgia in this game, but Clemson is replacing six of eight on defense, especially in the secondary especially, and Georgia's deep with weapons. There may not be an All-American receiver on this team. There may not be an All-American tight end on this team. They are deep and talented with guys that can play at a high level, collectively it's probably the deepest stable of pass catchers they've had in quite a while. I know you think, oh, they lost Bowers. What are they going to do at tight end? Backfill very effectively with multiple players. That's what they're going to do. They're going to show you they had guys on the roster last year that would have started anywhere else at that position. That's what they're going to do at tight end. Georgia also can win running the football, you know, even if what I just said wasn't true. Even if they were slightly more one-dimensional, they could still win this game running the ball. Now, Clemson folks listen to that and say, uh, against our front? Okay, show it. Well, this may be the best offensive line you face all year at Clemson. So, really good matchup there. UGA O-line, Clemson D-line, really good matchup. I just, I come back to this. Every time I watch Saban's Bama back in the day, Kirby's Georgia, uh, don't know that I can put anyone else in that category. They are not wobbly when they come out of the gate. Doesn't mean they're not beatable, but they're not wobbly. They don't hand games over, ever. They're always prepared. 
So you got to outplay them. And hardly anyone ever does, period. But out of the gate, especially, you're always like, oh, we want to get them early. No, you just don't want to get them. You really just don't want to get them. Because Georgia, also pretty good lately against ranked teams, 10-3 and three against the spread in that category. So let's just take a look. We see what the FanDuel number is. We see Georgia's favored by 13 and a half. The model agrees. We are right in line. We think these are very tight lines for week one. Georgia minus 14 is what our model has. And, um, <clears throat> man, I think, I think it's probably right. I think around two touchdowns is the gap we see here right now. I'm taking Georgia to win. I'm going to take Clemson to cover. I envision like a 10-point Georgia win in my mind. I, I, look. Maybe Georgia does to them what they did to Oregon a few years ago. That is a, still a very talented program at Clemson. And I got a hard time with all that pressure built up and the way last season ended and how much urgency and how much retrospective has been put on that team and how much of a fine-tooth comb has been run through it by that staff. Picturing them getting run out of the building in week one is one that's not impossible but it's uncomfortable on the backside if it does happen, especially with the way last year started and knowing how imperative a fast start is for them this year. Something tells me those folks at Clemson will find a way to keep it close. Something tells me the overall caliber of athlete on that team is probably being disrespected just a little bit. Still take Georgia to win, though.